do need a severe spanking on your body? Right, yeah. Maybe you have, you just don't okay, like camera ass. one, how's your position? Hello? Got it. My Great. Name? Okay, uh, camera two, can I punch you in? Uh, yeah, bring it on out. Okay, Cookie, I need names. Yeah, I got it! Do you want it? Do you want it? Okay, got it? hang on. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay everybody, one. I need, I need to focus. Good. Let's do it. Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our show. Why don't you tell me how many... Uh, you're a single player, is that right? All right, could you give me your name, please? Thanks, Jones. I can dig that. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. Hey, Carl. Okay, they're done. They got it. Thanks. I have a lot of Sally, confidence come on. in Larry. I need that 25K solar spot. 20 seconds. Whoa, heads up. All right, when a question pops up, you got to buzz in. Then you pick your answer on the screen and hit the right key on your keyboard. You follow me? 10 seconds. Okay, everybody, I need no. quiet. 86 the desktop, eight, eight, please. Okay, and go to black, please. Six. Post and stand by. Okay, ready, Carl. Okay, here we go. And dial 1-900-TART-D. Nice to have you here. Just you and me for this show, huh? All right, partner, let's rock and roll. The category behind this question is Love Among the Ruins. And we are talking 1000 bucks for this question. Now tell me what couple would most likely meet as a result of this ad. Me, white female, porcelain like skin, six foot ten goddess. You, Jewish male, eighteen feet tall, young and warlike with marble skin. Enjoy fine art and nudist resort, size doesn't count. Would enjoy cuddling but can't hug. Da Vinci's Mona Lisa and the bust of Nefertiti, Botticelli's Venus and the Lin <laughs> Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Too bad you didn't pick this. Venus de Milo and David. Both statues are nudes and the reason Venus can't hug is cause uh, she doesn't have any arms. How about it? Hit me with a category. Look to do it's question number two. The category is happy anniversary. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. You're a traditionalist and you're broke on your 12th wedding anniversary. What object in your bedroom can you wrap up and present to your spouse? And say it with soiled bed linen. The 12th anniversary calls for gifts made of linen. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Candied astronomers. Pop a right answer for this one. You got 3,000 greenbacks. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. Galileo is considered one of the great minds of all time. If while he was alive, you injected butterscotch into his cerebellum, what immediate result might occur? He might think he tasted butterscotch. He might start laughing. He might have an orgasm, or he might lose his coordination. Wow, that was a bad guess. And here's the right answer. He might lose his coordination. Say the cerebellum controls motor activity. If you poked it with something, your coordination might be affected. The butterscotch was just for fun. How about it? You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. The category, Thespians Who Need a Chill Pill. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, listen carefully. Let's say you're a stage actor waiting in the wings before an upcoming scene. As you and some people talk backstage, you say something that causes your superstitious cast members to have a freakish anxiety attack. So what did you probably say that freaked them out? Bafo, the dreaded M word. Superstitious actors freak on this, but you know what? I'm not scared of that. Macbeth, 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 Macbeth! Alright, come on, hit me. Ain't no job, it's question five. Here's the category. Fast food and merry old England. The amount on the table is three grand. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. 
If the guards at the Tower of London took their common names literally, which sandwich would they prefer? Monterey Chicken Sandwich, Big Mac, Whaler, or Filet of... Whoa! Oh, that was nice. And let's see the correct answer. Big Mac. Those guards are known as beef eaters. Okay, Big uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. It's time for a Tinker Lake Test Drive. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Mama's going to knock you out. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. All right, then, don't be fooled by the punctuation. What does this rhyme with? Batsa could play you, schmoozin' guy. Hit number one, it's why you can't run in the house. Okay, let's see if you know it. Goes for the gold and ends up with the goose egg. See if this helps. You two, stop running with that pointy stick. That's a good play, you schmoozing guy. Oh. And you listen to me. All the I'm sorry's in the world aren't going to bring that eye back. How about a hippie? Zaba dooba dabbin, question seven. Next up, great balls of fire. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. A white dwarf is a star that is always found in groups of seven, abnormally faint for its high density, composed entirely of burning helium, abnormally faint because it's near gravitational collapse. And you know what? When you're a few billion years old, you're pretty tired. You're ready to collapse. Okay, pick a category. This one's gonna be sugary personalities. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Get ready to buzz, cause here it comes. Who oh, the following should not be profiled in a People Magazine article by Donatello. A, B, and the People article, Renaissance artists, where are they now? And of course the answer would be, you know, dead. All right, come on. What's your sign? It's number nine. The name in this category is... Ah, the good old days. Okay, it shouldn't be too tough. This question's going to be worth a grand. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. According to a popular commercial from the 70s, she can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and also bake a great plan, clean dirt off the can, never let you forget you're a man. Never let you forget you're a man. Of course, if that's something you're in danger of forgetting, she might need more than perfume to get you going. Okay, pick it. Yo, have you been with nasty number 10? The category, see Jane Spot. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Hang on tight, because here we go. See Spot, see Spot Run. Which of these is not a definition of the word spot? A troublesome situation, a pimple, an edible marine fish, or pa past tense of spit. That would be spat. We've got ten questions down, and for ten more, we're going on to round two. Now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. How about it? The category is porn stars and the AMA. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which of these conditions might benefit a male porn star? Diphallic tarata, anarchism, dermatitis artifacta, or a mastia? Literally, two penis monster. I wonder what his G-string would look like. Okay. Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. One, two, 
Once again, it's time for a Snickerclish restroom. Here's your gibberish category. Circumcision and souvenirs. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. With what t-shirt slogan does this rhyme? Bald my gut, buzz bris ousy me hurt. And don't let the punctuation or the German fool you here. Your parents went somewhere. Let's see what you got, sir. My parents went to Florida, and ball mine got buzz bris ousy me hurts. So, what's German for, your parents are great big cheapskates? Alright, come on. Black heart attack, do you nightmare when you dream? Are you feeling lucky? It's number 13. Alright, let's see what we're doing here. Strange defense team strategies. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, let's see how well you know your reggae lyrics. He shot the sheriff, but what didn't he do? He did not shoot the deputy! Cause he was probably busy lighting up a big old spleef. How about it, hit me. it's question 14. The category behind this question is... Hallmark cards and concrete ponds. Hello, this one's gonna be worth $6,000. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Which character on the Beverly Hillbillies is the only one who should logically send Granny a card on Grandparents' Day? Jed, Miss Hathaway, Jeth- I'm not sure Jethro could sign his name. Besides, he's Granny's great nephew-in-law. Now, the correct answer is... Ellie Mae, Granny's true granddaughter. Okay, pick it. Next up, every girl's dream. It's gonna be worth $4,000. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. What happens when you twist growing up Skipper's arm? It breaks off, she turns into Barbie, Gilligan kisses the professor? No, that's what happens when you take a hammer to her arm. Here's what you should have guessed. Her breasts grow and her waist shrinks. But we got lots of reports of dislocated shoulders across the country, so kids, don't try this at home. How about it? Hit me with the category. Flush your head down the latrine. Easy away with sour cream. 16. This one's gonna be Mathematics and the People's Court. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Today on a Mathematical People's Court. The defendant says he can tell a lot about one side of a triangle by looking at the other two sides in the opposing angle. The plaintiff says he's a liar. What law is on the defendant's side? The law of triangles, the law of cosines, the law of angles, or the law of sine? In case you're curious about the correct answer, that's what the law of cosines says. You know what's cool about the law of cosines? You try breaking it. Come on, hit me. We need. Jiggy Jack is gone. Let me hear you scream. It's question 17. The name of this category is Answered Now. The question will be Yes. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. I'm trying to remember again. What? What is the name of that little guy? He's in the Star Wars movies and he gets his syntax all wrong. He's actually a Muppet. He's. Yoda. Often mistaken for a form of meditation, he's actually Luke Skywalker's Jedi Master. Okay, pick a kick. Here's the category. Confusion and the Captain's Log. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, now let's say Captain Kirk asked Mr. Spock to look something up on the ship's Decalogue. Mr. Spock respectfully declines and explains that the Decalogue is a 10-digit prime number, his own personal diary, the 10 com- I am sure he has no desire to show Kirk his, uh, private log. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Another name for the Ten Commandments. How 
How about it? Hit me with a category. He's me. Oh. He's me. Oh. It's the 19. The category. Food and foolish people. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which list contains, in order, a moon, a spoon, and a buffoon? Titan, laughing, regular salad, full, clown, runcible, exposed buttocks, team nutty professor, or table, court jester. I don't want to hear any wise cracks, but... Hey, lady! Alright, come on, hit me, we need a... The category is Toys Fried and 100% Vegetable Oil. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Before 1987, it was possible to get a Mr. Potato Head that could speak, smoke the pipe, was anatomically correct, or had a spud with a pud. Sorry. Should have picked this. He did smoke a pipe, but I swear he never inhaled. Okay. Enter the... Uh, you already know what you're doing. We'll make sure your match fits this clue. Comic books and magic gadgets. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Get ready to fire. Begin the attack. about it. Of course, it's not like you had any competition to make it a real challenge or anything, but, you know, that's not the point. The point is, you don't know Jack. The Bunch of Dirty on BSI. Next up is an all-new Cooper's Miss Absent. All right, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> this frog in my throat all day. Uh, yeah, don't mind. Hey, what's up? Why don't you tell me how many people are playing? We're playing solo. All right, then. Let's have... You want it, you got it. 30 seconds. Okay, you have the letter B as your buzzer. That's B as in who's buying the beer tonight? I forgot this. I've got my contacts in. Oh, who is it? I don't know, but I know that they're famous, and I couldn't really look at either Mary Lou Retton. All right, pay attention. People screw this up all the time. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? Ten seconds. Good luck. Okay, Nine, let's lose eight, the desktop. No, seven, and six, the black. Okay, five, you're up, Buzz. Four, three, Stand by. Here you go. Have a good one. You Consult physician before using. You may not really be a leper. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, 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 all right, how you doing? Looks like it's just the two of us. You ready to party? Take your pick, what do you say? This game is really funny, let's start with question one. And this category is fun with fannies.
And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Suppose you decided to sell your soul to Lucifer. In exchange for your soul, Lucifer fills your butt with Luciferin. <laughs> What'll your butt do? Glow like a firefly, squirt honey like a bee, spin s Luciferin is the pigment that makes fireflies glow. <laughs> and it would definitely make that late night trip to the bathroom a hell of a lot easier. Come on, we need a category. Category, let's do it. Questions that make me want a frosty beverage. And this one's worth $2,000. Look very carefully at this picture, won't you? And tell me, which fictitious crass commercial remake of a classic movie would this picture best represent? David Chesterfield, Dr. Shivago at Spago, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hydebed, or Dr. No... It's a poster for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hydebed. The real horror is trying to fold those damn things back up in the morning. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Okay, coming up, this category is Digging in the Dirt with the Radical Right. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. The Legion for Decency found smut in Farmer Brown's field. Assuming he keeps his back issues of jugs under the bed, what did they find? Algae in the feed trough, chemical seepage under his tractor, mold droppings in his soybeans, or fungus on his corn. They found fungus on his corn. But look on the bright side, if Farmer Brown just sticks to using jugs, at least he won't be getting any fungi anywhere else. Okay, pick a category. Shake it up the floor, shake it up the floor. And we call this one, Hey Baby. And 1,000 bucks is riding on this question. Get your fingers ready, here's one coming at you. Which of the following pickup lines could most accurately be used by a drone trying to hit on a queen bee? How about a little of my bee milk? Size matters. Check out my stinger. Wanna queen bees will mate with up to a dozen different drones, and they're kicked out of the hive for the wind. Hey, let us in. I thought we had something here. Next up, Basic Reading in Politics 101. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. It's time to fill in the blank. Limber up those fingers. When you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. Considering the Watergate scandal and how Nixon left office, how would you complete this sentence? C. Dick Blank. Tricky Dick resigned from office before he could be impeached. <laughs> An alternate answer could have been C. Dick have an overblown, subjective, fictionalized three-hour movie made about his life by Oliver Stone. The category. Keeping marriage a family affair. Get this right, get $2,000. Check this out. Okay, it's the annual Thanksgiving family gathering, and your brother falls in love with and decides to marry your father's cousin's daughter. What relation is your future sister-in-law to you? Great aunt, cousin once removed, second cousin. She's your second cousin. <laughs> and I understand that that marriage is legal everywhere, not just in Alabama. This category is Must Be Sweeps Week. 3,000 bucks for this one. Imagine an invigorating episode of Family Ties in which Mr. Keaton develops an obsession for the Greek mythological figure Agamemnon. 
Mr. Keaton wants to go to the block party, but the family station wagon just won't start. If he follows Agamemnon's example, what will Mr. Keaton do? Sacrifice Mallory, turn Jennifer into a snake, abdicate, say screw it. Maybe that's what you should have done. Too bad you didn't choose this. Agamemnon sacrificed his eldest daughter so fair winds would carry him to the Trojan War, so dad's gonna sacrifice Mallory. But hey, pity Mrs. Keaton. According to the story, she's gotta kill Mr. Keaton and have an affair with Skippy. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Excellent choice. It's time to play Dis or Dad. Here's a category for this dis or dat. My evil twin. Okay, concentrate. I'm gonna read off a list of... Oh, you already know what you're doing. Okay, give me 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's dance. Mr. Roper from Three's Company, one actor or... Garrett from Bewitched. Lionel Jefferson. Uncle Charlie of My Three Sons. Chris Partridge. Becky from Roseanne. Last one. And B from A. Hey, you dropped a couple, but I've seen worse. Okay, how about a new question? How about it? We need a category. It's party time. Here comes number nine. This one's gonna be able to clean tall latrines in a single bound. And this one's gonna be worth $1,001 bills. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. If Gomer Pilot had the powers of cartoon character Billy Batson, what superhero would he turn into when he exclaimed, Shazam! Captain America, Wonder Woman, The Shadow, or Captain Marvel? <laughs> Billy Batson said the magic word Shazam to turn into Captain Marvel. <laughs> I wonder what Sarge will do now that Gomer outranks him. Here's your pick. The category is when geeks come in handy. All right, this one's not too tough. We're talking one grand for it. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Oh my God! Quick! Somebody call an anthropologist. All right, you don't hear this very often, but in which of these movies might an anthropologist be of the most help? The bird. They study human origins, so anthropologists are good to have around when you're thawing out frozen cavemen. They're also good for settling bar bets about lemurs. Well, round one is done. Let's dive into round... And this question's category is low tech hack. This one's worth four thousand one dollar bills. Okay, ready? Complete this analogy. Pong is to Doom as Walkman is to Pac-Man, Sega is to Victrola, Eight Track is to Dat, or Hi-Fi is to Nintendo. Pong is to Doom as Eight Track is to Digital Audio Tape, or Low Tech meets High Tech. <laughs> Ah, oh boy, I don't know about all those Doom games, all that violence and mayhem. Uh, how about a nice calm trivia game? <laughs> all right, go ahead. Twelve. Category. It ain't bagpipes. Six thousand dollars could be yours. Hang on tight, cause here we go. Alright, your friend the performance artist gives you a preview of her new piece. What would be the best title for it if it sounds like this? <laughs> Deflator Frosh, Pachelbel's cat. She's burping the tune of a little night music, so she's doing a little night burping. Hey, Mozart would have written it that way if he'd thought of it. How about it? Take the 
The category is, no, I'm telling you, you stink. We are talking four big ones. Please, help me out here, cuz I can't remember this word at all. Now, when you know the answer, buzz in and start type. You know, that, that guy Archimedes yelled it while he was in the bathtub. It's the st Okay, let's Eureka! Archimedes yelled it, gold diggers yelled it, and it's California's state motto. Some people still debate exactly what Archimedes found when he was naked in the tub. Come on, we... We wish you a number 14 and a happy Hanukkah. Okay, coming up, this category is... Talking Trash. 2,000 bucks for right answer. Okay, it's time to rummage through someone's trash can. And, uh, uh, it looks like some of this stuff in here is pretty old. All right, let's see. All right, we've got a bunch of McDonald's wrappers, some uneaten broccoli, uh, a few peanut shells. It's the combined trash from the Clinton, Bush, Reagan, and Carter administrations and the foods associated with them. Hey, what's this at the bottom of the can? Oh, look, America! Alright, go ahead and pick one. And we call this one, Stuff You Can Only See on Cable. This one's worth six grand. Okay, take a shot at this. Which of these is one of the special tricks famous 19th century performer Joseph Pujol did in his stage show? He called himself the Fartis. The shows were very popular in France, except on nights when he'd had too much chili. Take your pick. What do you say? Uh oh, oh, oh chess butt sits grime floor. It's time for a tingling test run. Here's a gibberish category. Give it to Opie. He'll eat anything. And ten thousand dollars is what we're stepping out the door with. All right, I'm taking cash away every second and a half. So the faster you are, the more you score. Okay, tell me, with what does this rhyme? Why and B leave grits hot, mutter. And remember, don't get all muddied up by the punctuation. First clue, it's the name of a product. Glad I could help. It's name of a product that you... Okay, go for it. Hey, tell me this. If it ain't butter, what the hell is it? Okay, pick a category. And this category is... Lassie, don't come home. Two G's for a right answer. All right, here we go. Imagine a place called the Hollywood Cruelty Delicatessen, which serves the finest cuts of popular animal celebrities. If you wanted a pork sandwich with a side of blubber, what could you order? A Cujo Club with a side of Bonzo. Babe, the pig would give you the pork, and Orca, the killer whale, would provide the blubber. And I always like my Orca fried up with some okra. Category, the underappreciated Christmas gift. Pop a right answer, you got 4K. All right, fingers limber, cuz here comes the question. Which of the following would you not find in a series of calendars featuring pinups from the Chinese Zodiac? Miss Dog, Miss Gorilla. There is no year of the gorilla. So there'd be no Miss Gorilla, which is okay by me. I'm not really into back hair. Category, let's do it. Donkey, hanky, panky. We got four grand on the table. Imagine Mr. S tired of just standing in the barn and talking every once in a while. He wants to go to college. Mr. Ed's first question on the math section of the SHAT, the Standard Horse Aptitude Test, is which of the following equations is genetically correct? What is the right answer? A female horse, a female horse and a male donkey make a mule. <laughs> 
Mr. Ed learned this from a secret stash of horse porn he keeps under his head. <laughs> How about it? We need a kid. Superstar. Go special. Twenty. Alright, next up. They shoot voters, don't they? Four thousand bucks behind this one. Hey, do you remember Secretariat? The racehorse that won a horse racing triple crown in 1973 and went down in history as one of the greatest ever. If, instead of Secretariat, the winning jockey had saddled up and ridden Proletariat, who or what would he have ridden to a triple crown win? A large capitalist American hotel chain, the class of working industrial wager. The proletariat is a term used for industrial employees as both an economic and a social class. Basically the human equivalent of a horse. <laughs> and Mr. Ed could tell you from his SHATs, if you mix secretariat with the proletariat, you get a mule. Take your pick, what do you say? Time for the attack. Oh, you already know the way this works. All right, make sure your match fits this clue. An either or proposition. And I have a proposition for you. Let's go to work, shall we? something out of you. Well, let me fill back up your electrolyte count with these words. Great job, everybody. Good show. Okay, let's roll the commercials and uh, contestants. Cookie, what's happening? Can I ask you something? Now that you're the new scoreboard leader, is it lonely at the top? Well, maybe you had no friends to begin with. I don't mean to pry. Just, just let me know when you want to play again. Arthur Daniels Hartland. If we told you who we are, we'd have to kill you.
It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, how you doing? Good, good to see you. Yada, yada, yada. Well, all right, that's out of the way. Ah, the game of solitaire. That's okay, I'm here alone too. So let's get it on. Okay, I'm here. Let's see what we got going. Grow up. How does $2,000 sound? Flex those fingers, because here it comes. If you spent the rest of your life stuck in the first of Freud's psychosexual developmental stages, over which of the following would you constantly be obsessing? Lollipops, toilet tissue, peek a Here's what you should have picked. According to Freud, the first stage in our psychosexual development is the oral stage. Anyone got a toothpick? Or some floss? Or even a pacifier? Alright, hit me. I love the way you prove my number two. For your enjoyment, multiple personalities and the ancient world. You give me a right answer, I give you 3,000 bucks. Hey, remember that multiple personality chick Sybil from that movie with Sally Field? Well, if one of Sybil's multiple personalities had been a Sybil from classical mythology, what might that personality have said? I am a young nymph like Gidget. Just like a nun, I can fly. I can run swifter than... A Sybil in classical mythology was a female prophet of great wisdom, so she would have known all about Sally Field's future. But nobody would have guessed that ridiculous, you like me, you really like me speech. Um, that was embarrassing. Okay, pick a category. The category is, I write better when I'm drunk. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. You know, Shakespeare was a great writer and everything, but with him it was all me, me, me. If William Shakespeare were alive today, which drama award ceremony would he crash, thinking it was named after his... Shakespeare hung out in the Globe Theater, so he might be interested in the Golden Globe Awards. Thou likest me, thou really likest me. See, it's embarrassing when Sally says it, but it's classy when Shakespeare does. I need a category. The selection is more ethnic stereotypes. This one can net you a grand. Okay, imagine this. As a rite of passage, young Kane from Kung Fu must learn Master Khan's ancient Chinese secret. If Khan's secret is the same as the popular TV commercial, what might Kane say? My husband's some hotshot. Here's his ancient Chinese secret. Cal Gan was the ancient Chinese secret the guy at the laundry kept from his customers. Kane's big secret? He always wore the same clothes and never did laundry. Category, please. You don't wanna blow it on number five. Okay, give it up for great literature and great liquor. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Some authors are inspired by their muse. Others do it with alcohol. Choose the word that rhymes with the correct pronunciation of this famous author's name. Boozed, soused. <laughs> For the curious, here's the right answer. <laughs> the Frenchman who wrote Remembrance of Things Past was Marcel Proust. As in, when I'm juiced and need a boost to get goosed, I read Proust. Alright, hit me. Now serving, not the Milky Way. Thousand bucks if you get it. Here's one just for the kid. Which of the following characters would not be able to nurse her young? Jessica Rabbit, Sweet Polly Purebred, Minnie Mouse, or Daisy Duck? The only non-mammal here, Daisy would not produce milk. Therefore, she's unable to nurse her young. Daisy is the only one, though, who'd be able to make some tasty omelets for her little ducklings. Okay. Hey, look over there. It's question seven. 
This one's called, If I Hear It One More Time, I'll Go Blind. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, remember that 70s song, Blinded by the Light? Because his or her eyes are the most light sensitive, which of the characters from these classic rock tunes would most easily be blinded by the light? Bob Welch and Blue Eyes are the most light sensitive. Let's see, linger on your light sensitive eyes, your bloodshot eyes. Oh, damn it! I need a category. Hey, all right, guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dat. And this Dis or Dat question's category is, play that funky music, old white man. I'm going to read off seven. Oh, oh, so you already know how to play. Okay, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. And we're off. Hannibal Hamlet, Beaver Funky. Spiro Agnew. Bootsy Collins, Walter Mondale, Sly Stone, George Clinton, one more, James Brown, Last. that's all she wrote, Thing of Beauty, let's see your new score, how long does another day at the office, alright, let's move on, Category, please. They know if he is number nine. Well, what do we have here? This question makes wide right turns, and you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Hey, it's moving day, and you're moving to Burma. If you try to rent a trailer from the oo hall you find in the Burma phone book, who might end up helping you with your move? Are you an ambassador, a priest, a martial arts student, or some guy named Hall? How do you say, um, no? Let's take a look at the right answer. In Burma, the word you is used as a salutation of respect before a man's name, so oo hall would be some guy named Hall. After he's done helping you move, you can take him to one of those all oo can eat places. He'll dig that. Okay, I need it. Oh yes, it's time for your fantasies to be realized. You're joining a three-way. Alrighty, here's the deal. Oh, alrighty, no foreplay it is. Let me guess, you're not the slow romantic kind of lover. Well, you asked for it, here it is. The category for this three-way is all the live long day, which means we're going to be joined by morning, noon, and night. Looks like this is it. Here's your three-way. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Okay, we're stripped down to our skivvies. Looks like that's all we got. Let's see how you scored. Wow, I'm just speechless. Uh, you're the best I've ever had, I swear. Uh, while I regain my composure, let's check out your overall score. Yes, it's time to move on now, but I'll never forget our special experience together. Uh, whatever your name is. That's it for round one. Let's go to round two. Every question in round two is worth All right, hit me. May I introduce West Side Funeral for a thousand big ones for a right answer here. Hey, you remember West Side Story and how that one guy Riff got killed? Well, suppose Riff's headstone had accidentally said R.I.F. instead of R.I.P. Considering what institution R.I.F. stands for, who might have been in attendance at his burial? Packs of wild dogs, legions of... R.I.F. stands for Reading is Fundamental, a program in which school kids receive free books. <laughs> Hey, remember kids, the only rumbling you should be doing is in the stampede, headed for the library. Okay, pick a category. Twelve. 
This little number's known as religion and downsizing. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. You know, organized religion just can't seem to turn a buck like it used to. It's downsizing time, and I'm afraid we're going to have to let one of the major world religions go. If we go by the rule of seniority, which religion gets the axe first? Islam, Christianity, Judaism, or Hinduism? According to the rule of seniority, last hired, first fired. Since Islam is the most recently established major world religion listed, it would be the first to go. Coming at you. Goodbye, city life. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Put it in gear, cause here we go. While on your way to visit the folks from Green Acres in Hooterville, you take a wrong turn at Mr. Drucker's and end up in a Hooverville. What would you expect the houses to look like? Hoover Dam? Hmm, damn. See, now, I could have given you some cash if you pick this. Hooverville refers to Depression-era tent cities built by the poor and homeless, so named because Herbert Hoover was president then. But, you know, if the folks in Hooterville made living in a barn seem charming, maybe the folks in Hooverville can do the same for cardboard boxes. Okay, I need a category. Well, the good news is, you're still alive. Bad news, you just picked an impossible question. And I believe this one's called a can of worms with nothing to open it. And let's see, this one's only worth uh, $20,000. Okay, get your typing fingers ready, because you're going to have to buzz in and type out this impossible answer. Within two years, how much time was there between the invention of the can and the invention of the can opener? It's all... The can was invented in 1810, and the can opener was invented in 1858, 48 years later. In a stroke of good luck, however, for the first 48 years, all canned food was spam. I guess they realized they didn't need to rush. I need a cat. 15th floor, lingerie, housewares, and useless trivia. Well, looks like this category is guys with 9-inch nails. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If rock band 9-inch nails changed its name to the technical term for a 9-inch nail, what might you hear? Any nail over 6 inches long is called a spike. How soon do you think it'll be before their fans start showing up with 9-inch spikes through their lips? Category, please. Uh-oh, wet sucked it shine floor. It's time for Flickerish Lesson. Step right up to your gibberish category. Broken bones and inopportune noises. 10,000 bucks if you move fast on this gibberish question. Now check it out. As the time disappears, so does the money. So the sooner you buzz in, the better. All right, tell me, which film title does this rhyme with? Anything squish, stay splint. And don't think about that punctuation. First clue, the story of a horribly burned man. The story of a horribly burned man that won the... You want it, you got it. The English Patient is a very, very good movie. I haven't seen it, and I don't really plan to, but I can tell you that it's very, very good. Okay, pick a category. Number 17. This one likes to go by litigation with the Lord. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Okay, imagine this. You're a lawyer from Galilee, present at Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, described in the book of Matthew in the New Testament. If you file suit against Jesus for failing to include your clients in the list of those named as blessed in the Sermon on the Mount, whom do you represent? The meek, the huddled masses, the peacekeepers, or the pure in heart? 
The peacekeepers are among the blessed. That means riot police, school bus drivers, and NBA refs all have a free ride. <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. According to the Statue of Liberty, the huddled masses can get into the United States, but Jesus doesn't promise them anything. But he'll probably settle out of court for a few grand and agree to reevaluate your client's state of grace. Okay, I need a category. This category is known as, You're So Vain. Get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Heads up, here it comes. If Bonfire of the Vanities author Tom Wolfe had been present at the historical event after which the book is named, what could he have experienced? Seeing someone being burned at the stake, having copies of his book burned, putting out a fire at the Vanity Mansion, or roasting marshmallows with Queen Victoria. A fire at the mansion of the Vanity family? <laughs> That, my friend, is what's known as a hunk of hunk of burning crap. In case you're wondering. In the 15th century, the people of Florence were urged by the cleric Savonarola to burn all their books and other worldly trappings in an event known as the Bonfire of the Vanities. And if a certain female co-star went back in time with him, maybe there would have been another roast called the Bonfire of the Melanies. I need a cat. Step right up for question 19. The category? A woman of all seasonings. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Let's rock. Suppose Mrs. Dash went on a crash diet. Because it's an even smaller amount than a dash, which of the fu- A pinch is about 1 16th of a teaspoon. A dash is just a little bit more. <laughs> No matter how little she eats, I still say she's got too much salt in her diet. All right. Question number 20. Pucker up for this old household accident. How does $4,000 grab you? Think fast. If this old house changed its format to concentrate on showing the most common household accidents, what would you not say? Swallowing poison is not one of the most common household accidents. But seeing the plumber's butt crack? Yes, that's a common household accident. Category, please. Time for the attack. When you see... Alright, fine. You want to get to the attack? Consider it done. You may need this clue. Of course I take that personally. And you should take it any way you can get it. Good luck. But not too shabby, now let's see your final score! That's the game! Way to go, player. It, it's like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer and go make some friends, because... You don't know Jack! Beautiful people, I have not seen a show this good since 1950... Uh, never mind, roll the credits. Hey, Raul, are we playing again? Making the high score, boys.
for it, that ought to give you a nice sense of accomplishment. Hey, if you still feel unfulfilled and want to keep battering away at these useless accolades, let me know and we'll set you up with another game. We feed millions of people around. Hello, it's nice to see you. How many people will be playing? One player? Great. I'll keep you company. Is this your first? Welcome back. We may tease you a lot, but we've got you on the spot. Welcome back. You should be typing in your... Perfect. Thank you. As you know, your buzzer is the key with the B on it. Well, that's all I have to say. Hope to see you at the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. You Don't Know Jack is sponsored by the American Association of... Dermatologists Limited. Whether you need tan skin or skin's tan, your hide is safe in our hands. And now, please welcome your host, Guy Towers. Hey, how you doing? So, you're the fur trapper, huh? Well, not gonna touch that one. Well, aren't you lucky? I'm about to show you some skin. Oh, that bus. This baby's gonna be... There's more than one way to skin a cat. Here's the question. If someone offers to teach you how to skin the cat, what should you bring? Skin the cat, also known as the tidal wave, is a yo-yo trick. And you know, if you have one of those razor-edged yo-yos, you can skin the cat and skin the cat. All right, buddy. And your category is... Dermatology is the best medicine. And away we go. Okay, one dermatologist jokes to the other, Hey, Alan, your epidermis is showing. The other... The subcutaneous layer of tissue lies beneath the epidermis and the dermis. So if that's showing, then Sid's got some serious problems. Well, aside from thinking that the epidermis is showing joke is actually funny. It's your... The category is... Your skin glows as if you've had a nutritional meal. Okay, 3,700 and some change, if you can tell me this. According to some experts, humans can get all the nutrients they need from... Some food experts say we can get all the nutrients we need from a diet of milk and potatoes. Yeah, I think one of the experts is from Idaho and the other one's from Wisconsin. Go figure. Hit that button. And for your viewing pleasure, do you peek after you strip? Hey, I, you know that song Dean Martin's known for singing called That's Amore? Well, there's a reason I bring it up, okay? Check out these alternate lyrics. When the strip... Biore makes those poor perfect strips that pull out dirt and blackheads from your disgusting face. And what you rely on when Biore is all gone, that's called duct tape. How much? Time for a little roadkill. When you see an answer that connects the two clues, buzz in. And memorize those correct answers to figure out that bonus question. Buckle up, let's motor. Like M for murder, it keeps time, sun blank. Where do these two intersect? Symbol of peace and related to pigeon. Score. Elephant's tusk and Keenan 
flank weigh-in. Dice of lamb and fuse from a volcano. Score. Simple machine and handle. Score. Muscular fitness and sounder pitch. Now let's go for the bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all medieval toys? What to do with a payphone? We need to prepare eggs. These are our live characters. New Crayola colors. Free of soap. You nailed it. Rack it up. Man, you really cleaned up on that one. You better break open the bubbly. All right, get a load of you. Ah, let's keep going. How much cash? This one's called... Fill her up the hard way. Coming at you. If the local fast food joint offers free capillary refills, what will they do to you? You can check for good blood circulation by pressing a fingernail and watching the blood refill into the capillaries. And then you can peel back the nail to see if you're an instant winner. All right. Get ready for... Sex addicts. Hey, uh, are you a sex addict? If you just can't get enough formication, how might you enjoy doing the deed? Only with Norm Crosby, while tattoos are being removed, with ants... Formication is an itching sensation that feels like ants are crawling all over your skin. And by ants, I mean the insects, you know. If you got relatives crawling all over you, that's a whole nother condition you got there. Freak. All right, he buds in and set the cash value. Oh, nice pick. It's time for a dis or dat. This dis or dat's category name is... You can be too rich and too skinny. All right, I'm going to list off seven items. For each one, I want you to tell me if it's a name that includes light or a name that includes slim. You cash in for each one you get right, but you lose out for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. you got 30 seconds to nail all seven. And we're up. Seven out of seven. Damn! Okay, my friend, there's your score. Uh, let's see what you can do to it. Hit that buzzer and let's... Hey, looks good to me. And this one's called... Do I use the small fork on myself or the big one? Okay, suppose you're attending a formal dinner party at a swanky home in the Hamptons. Funny thing is, the host is a flesh-eating virus, and you're the featured course. Because you're the meat course at a formal dinner, when will the viral dinner guest begin dying? The bad news is, you'll be eaten right before the salad. Uh, the good news is, if there's anything left of you, you'll have plenty of room for dessert. Tickle your... There you go, nice job. And we've got... I can stop using lip balm anytime I want to. Here comes the questione. Oh no, the FDA has outlawed Carmex. Carmex is made with beeswax. The thing about that is though, you know, the bees, they're so sneaky, they sting you on the lips, and then your lips swell and pus and eventually dry out, and then you need more beeswax. See what they're doing? See? Alright, buzz in. Let's... This one will be... Sports that need more nudity. Questions coming. If you're skinny dipping at the Skins game, who's seeing your naked rump on national TV? The Skins game is an annual golfing event. The Senior Tour has one as well as the PGA and the LPGA. 
And you know, you should really be ashamed of yourself. Golf enthusiasts don't like anything distracting them from the excitement of watching other people play golf. Hit your buzzer and snap. And your category is... Love your liver spots. Look out, here it comes. What weapon would work best against Detective George Francisco? In Alien Nation, Detective Francisco is an alien, and uh, the aliens can't take the salt water. It burns their skin. But man, good luck trying to beat him in a sour milk chugging contest. Hit that Gee, I hope you get this clue. What a lovely shade you are. Me, I prefer Venetian blinds, but you know, I have like a western exposure, so... Uh, oh, uh, good luck! Nobody's perfect, especially you. This week on the James Brown Celebrity Scrabble Tournament, the Godfather of Soul takes on former child star Rusty O'Dean. What? 57 points! H. W U N A W U H? What? That's not a word. Get a minute. Jump back. Come on, this is a fair. I think it was bad. It's a minute. It's Tuesday after Hallie McNeil. Hey, folks. Crazy Ernie here, inviting you to come on down to Crazy Ernie's Discount Carpet and Mutual Fund Emporium. It's my third anniversary blowout. That's right. I've got insane deals on wall-to-wall, large-cap, small-cap, shag, bond, stain master, and concentrated health care. I must be out of my mind. I got active managed. I got no load. I got free installation. What must I be? Nice of you to drop by. Okay, are you gonna play on the network or just in your room? Oh, sounds good. How many people are playing? Okay, then just type in your John Henry and we'll get you. Great, that takes care of that. So, my solitary companion. No instructions? No problem. I'm sure you're anxious for the fancy pot picking spectacle. Be off with you. <laughs> Sloppy Seconds episode. This one's all about things that come in second. You can think of it as our way of saying, try just you. This is all your it. Well, 
guess I have the time. Okay, boot camp's over. Time for battle. Okay, hit your buzzer so we can get a value for the question that's coming up. The reward for this one is forty-seven fifty. This one's called "If at first you don't succeed, make a sequel." Okay, free your mind. Which of these movies is not a sequel? Aliens, Revenge of the Ninja, Max Dugan Returns, or Airplane? Max Dugan Returns wasn't a sequel at all. But I'm still waiting for Max Dugan Returns Episode One to come out. I've already bought my tickets. Yep, stood in line for eight hours in my Max Dugan costume. Buzz in for the value. Here's what you can win on this one: three thousand dollars. Here we have pate. Speaking of sequels, I think the problem with Speed 2: Cruise Control was that they strayed too much from the original formula. If instead of a cruise ship they had set Speed 2 on a bus, what would we have seen? A runaway airplane, a runaway parade float, a runaway sailboat, or a runaway bicycle? You're toast. The correct answer is. That's all I'm saying. A smaller boat would have been just fine. You see, a bus is a fishing boat. You use it to, you know, catch herring. And Dennis Hopper could have even played the evil, out of control herring. You know, like he did in that Waterworld movie. Go ahead and grab an amount. The amount on this question is two thousand five hundred. All right, give it up for toilet humor stinks. Ah,、uh, you know what I love about kids—the way they hold up one finger for pee pee and two fingers for poo poo. <laughs> I tell you, I wish I could remember that sometimes. Anyway, since he popularized V is for victory, who probably showed two fingers to his parents as a child to signal I am going to. That crazy Brit himself, Winston Churchill, became famous for flashing the V is for victory sign during WW2. Cheerio and good morning, dearest mummy. Please prepare the commode for one of my most glorious poo-poos. Time to choose a value. All right, then let's see what this does for you. Twenty-two hundred and fifty smackers. Now, what did I do with my fly swatter? Hello and welcome to. Now don't forget, all you gotta do is buzz in to squash the bugs that don't belong. We're gonna be looking at a final round value of twenty-two hundred and fifty smackers. Okay, batten down the hatches, 'cause we're heading toward the windy city. Here we go. TV show is set in Chicago. Buzz in when you see one that's not. Select me. Chicago mobsters. Songs by the band Chicago. Chicago sports teams. Chicago schools. Began at the Second City Theater. Chicago buildings. Well. 
That was really um okay. Just okay. Choose a value. Here's what we're looking at. 4,250 bucks. The category? Tiny jockeys who ride atoms. Heads up, here it comes. Suppose you accidentally mistake the periodic table of the elements for horse racing results. It could happen if you go... Hydrogen, helium, and lithium have the atomic numbers of 1, 2, and 3, so they would appear to have one place and showed. Helium, you ran a great race today. What's your secret? Well, I just get plenty of sleep and I try to get out there every day and practice really hard. Hi, Mom! Buzz in for the amount. The total value for this one is 3750 bucks. Up next, does a dog day afternoon precede a three dog night? Now, you may not remember it, but at some point in your life, you've heard that song, One by Three Dog Night, right? You know how one is the loneliest number and everything? Okay, well, how about this? According to Three Dog Night, what is two? The loneliest number since the number one, a friend you can always count on, a big fat doobly-doo, or an ice cream sundae for me and you. Why does everything bad happen to me? Could have given you some cash if you picked this one. If you believe that three dog night, one is the loneliest number, two is the loneliest number since the number one. Perhaps somebody should introduce numbers one and two to the concept of deodorant? Time to pick a value. Here's what we got. 3,500 bucks. Open wide and get ready for, oh, the spud manity. Here's the question. If an inexperienced chef accidentally twice baked Mr. Potato Head, what would happen to the spudly toy? He'd get deep fried in oil. He'd get mashed to a pulp. No. But you know, I wonder if a potato's scream sounds anything like a lobster's. The correct answer is... A twice baked potato involves baking the potato, then mashing it, then, get this, baking it again. Can you imagine? I'd stay away from the liver and onions, too. I think they were playing Operation back there in the kitchen. Pick any amount. This question comes out to around five grand. Coming at you. It ain't over till the urine's been tested. Yes, it's time for another exciting episode of Robot Theater. Today, a scene from sports history. So, Ben Johnson, how does it feel to win the gold medal in the 100-meter dash? Canada must be very proud of you. Well, I don't like to brag about how incredibly fast I am, but stop. We have just received the results of your drug test. You have tested positive for steroids, an illegal substance. Your gold medal will go to the second-place finisher. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who ultimately won the gold medal in the men's 100-meter dash at the 1988 Summer Olympics? Edwin Moses, Bruce Jenner, Carl Lewis, or Ben Johnson? I think Edwin Moses was that hurdler guy who parted the Red Sea. Uh, does this ring a bell? As if he didn't have enough of them already, Carl Lewis was awarded the 88 100-meter gold medal after Ben Johnson was DQ'd. Carl Lewis also won the 92 gold medal after it was revealed that the winner actually crossed the finish line on a motorcycle. Go ahead and pick an amount. Your value is $4,000. What in the... I can't read this. It's time for... Remember, unscramble the anagram and then buzz in with the answer. You act fast, you get more cash. We're going to start this question out at $4,000. Okay, take a look at this anagram, unscramble the letters, and tell me what you come up with. Pride incest. Remember, you can't trust a politician. 
like most politicians, this one doesn't usually do a whole hell of a lot. All right, type the answer and hit return. Yes, of course, the Vice President of the United States. You can generally spot him at major sporting events. He'd be the guy waving the enormous foam finger, screaming, I'm number two! I'm number two! Woohoo! Yeah, in your face, man! Choose an amount. The total amount for this question is... 1750. Let's see what we got going. If life were a playground, there would be no divorce. Okay, let's rock. Who must have called a do-over with Melanie Griffith after their first marriage ended? Don Johnson, Antonio... <laughs> Melanie Griffith was Don Johnson's first and second wife. Yeah, they got divorced and then got remarried. Now might be an appropriate time to offer a collective thanks be to God that he didn't call a do-over when it came to his singing career. Take a value. The price tag on this one is going to be 3500 bucks. Let's have a big warm welcome for Be All That You Can Be in Polyester. Now, what would this episode be without some mention of that Saks Fifth Avenue of second-hand clothing, the Salvation Army? Suppose the Salvation Army were to declare war on the wealthy. Given where the Salvation Army began, whom would you expect to see leading the charge? The Salvation Army was started in London by a guy named William Booth back in the 1860s. All right, men, we've got to take that hill. Call headquarters and tell them, oh no, Edmund's down. He's lost his rainbow suspenders. Repeat, he's lost his rainbow suspenders. Grab a value. I bet you're going to be... You're about to jump head first into a diss or dat. The category for this diss or dat question is, just tell me which one is the hot one. Okie dokie, I'm going to read off a list of seven sets of siblings, real and fictional, and I'd like you to tell me if they are twins or not. All right, Charles in charge, you think you know the rules? I'm just going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Let the games begin. Brandon and Brenda on 902. Liam and Noel Gap. The Hardy Doobie Brothers, The Bobsy Children, Matthew and Gunnar Nelson, Last One, The Smothers Brother, That's All Seven! Hey, good work, you only missed one, that's nothing to feel bad about, let's look at your new total! Okay, okay, get over yourself. Pick a value! Let's have a look at this question's value. 1750. For your viewing pleasure, when one dick is not enough. Okay, okay, it's analogy time. Get your analogies right here. Pope John Paul I is to Pope John Paul II as Dick York is to Dick... Dick Sargent replaced Dick York on Bewitched, just like the equally hilarious Pope John Paul II replaced Pope John Paul I. In fact, now that I think about it, the only difference between the two is that one lived with a witch while the other condemned witches to the fires of hell where they would burn in eternal damnation. Huh. Go ahead and choose a value. Let's see what the total amount on this one is. 2,500. Shake hands with... Waiter, there's a charo in my soup. Okay, listen very closely. If Charo actually cha <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, oh boy. Nothing like seeing your lunch for the second time, huh? Oh, boy, wow, look at this. There's uh, chunks of eggplant and tomatoes and zucchini peppers all over the place. Thank God I don't have to clean that up, huh? Say, um <coughs> what did I just vomit up? 
ratatouille, hoss and pfeffer, chowder, or booyah. In addition to being a funny word that doesn't sound the way you'd think it would, ratatouille is a vegetable stew made with eggplant, tomatoes, zucchini, and peppers. And now I get to enjoy the delicious taste of ratatouille all over again. I'm joking, I'm joking, that's a dog licking it up. Good boy, good boy, come here, I got some between my teeth. Yeah! How about a value? All right then, grab hold of something. You're almost through, but first, the attack. You should already know how this works. All you need is to get a clue. The second baby in the baby carriage. You know, I'm a second child. Growing up wasn't too bad, except for trying to fit into my older sister's hand-me-downs. Well, have mercy! You annihilated that attack! Let's check out what it did to your score! There it is! Wow, that was an intense game! That was really thrilling! You were by far the best player we had! Now do me a favor, look to your left, now look to your right, and repeat after me. Here at Wackofson and Snurm, we're working for you. Ahoy there! Welcome to the game! Yeah, so who all's gonna be sailing with us today? Hey, you have a name, lover? Nice. Excellent! Hey, you buzz in with the... Oh, okay, I got it, got it. Now get out there and secure as much loot as you can. Last voyage, you did pretty well. Do it again. Perhaps soon I'll be free. Free, I say! How you doing? Schmitty here. So glad you could make it. This was at the top of my to-do list. Okay, take your seats, please. It's time for liftoff. Time to select a category. May I introduce drinking yourself under the boxing ring. $2,000 at stake on this one. Hey, you know Punchy, that adorable little mascot for Hawaiian Punch? Well, how about this? If Punchy always hit people using a straight punch with a snap to it, what would be a more appropriate name for him? Upper Cutty, Roundhousey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The defeated loser of the world, you! <laughs> a little rocky in the head, I see. 
In boxing circles, the jab is a straight punch delivered with a snap. So punchy would be jabby. And hey, jabby is still better than the original ideas they had for the mascot. Groin kicky and sharp sticky in the eye. Go ahead, pick one of these. Let's take a look at Remember the Whatever. Give me a correct answer, I'll give you six grand. Yes, there's nothing like old heroic battle cries like Remember the Maine from the Spanish American War. Ah, yes, the Maine. <laughs> the Maine. What, um, what was the Maine, anyway? Uh, ship. The Maine was a ship. The U.S. declared war when it done got blowed up in Havana Harbor. Of course, now our U.S. history books just contain post-it notes that say, Remember to remember the main. Go ahead, pick a category. Well, if it isn't my old friend, they're parents, so they got it right at least once. This one can net you four grand. It's go time. If your mom and dad were total science geeks, how might they begin your birds and the bees talk? Let's see about the Mustelidae and Suidae. It's time to talk about the a The total spazoids that you call parents will be discussing the Avis and Apis, or birds and bees. <laughs> oh, and by the way, if they decide to do a live visual demonstration, run for your life. Pick a category. This one's called Hands on Several Hard Bodies. Looks like this one's going for 2,000 bucks. Okay, you know what movie I love? Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> Those aren't pillows. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Hey, wouldn't it be great if they made a sequel with a bigger budget where those guys had to do it all again, but with flashier vehicles? If John Candy and Steve Martin had actually traveled on planes, trains, and automobiles, which of these, in order, would they have taken? Super Chiefs, Firebirds, and MiGs, MiGs, Super Chiefs, and Firebirds, Firebirds, MiGs, and Super Chiefs, or MiGs, Firebirds, and Super Chiefs? Lame. <laughs> you want to see what the smart money says? A MiG's a plane, a Super Chief's a train, and guess what? A Firebird is a car. Put them all together and it spells high comedy. Well, not really, but you get the point. Want to pick a category? Oh, look what this is. It's time for a... Go after fast, fast man. Let's see if you can make sense of this category. Does this leotard make me look tough? Right out of the gate, this one's going to be worth ten grand. Okay, I'll be giving you a gibberish phrase. Simply buzz in when you know what it rhymes with. And by the way, I'll be taking away some cash every couple of seconds, so make it quick. All right, get those fingers ready for some typing, won't you? I'd like you to take a look at this phrase and tell me what it rhymes with. Okay. Uh, new tights, Ned? Bring some! Oh, and uh, don't let that punctuation fool you. Okay, first clue, you can find it on any map. Oh, um, Des Moines? Yep, you can find it on any map. Provided you're looking at Europe. Last clue, united we stand, divided we fall. My kingdom for an answer! That does it. I'm sorry, you'll have to forgive me. I was assuming that everybody knew that England is a part of the new tights net bring some. You know, you're not really helping with that whole stupid American stereotype thing, okay? Thanks a lot. Go ahead, pick a category. Here's a little something I call, Everybody Must Get Stones. And you pocket 4,000 bucks if you get this one right. Ah, those Brits. They've got a confusing way of doing everything. Like measuring weight. They've got this one measurement they call a stone. Here, let me show you. 
Which of these Brits kidney stone stories is least impressive in terms of weight? Oh dear, I passed one five stone stone. Blimey, I passed two three stone stones. Righto, I passed... You know, it really doesn't matter how much a stone weighs, because no matter how you cut it, one times five is less than two times three, three times two, or four times two. And honestly, no matter how you cut it, even passing a one stone stone would take away my will to live. So, what's it going to be? Welcome to the Jack Attack. Pay attention to the I... Oh, well, you already know how to play. Well, we'll see about that. Here's your clue. Maybe you can go home again after you finish this Jack Attack. best player we had. Now do me a favor, look to your left, now look to your right, and repeat after me. You don't know Jack! You don't know Jack! 